It's a stinking hot day in my non-air-conditioned office and I'm annoyed. The sort of annoyed that's described mistakenly as red hot. The correct colour choice is of course white. I log into my account and there's three help desk mail requests all ticking away to expiration, then escalation, then further escalation, then follow up mail message, then even further escalation, then second follow up mail message and casual phone call, then still further escalation, then non-casual phone call, then threats, then ultimately, and sadly, violence. But not so sadly that I won't resort to it, and they know I will too. Because I used to be... THE BASTARD OPERATOR FROM HELL! And sometimes, late at night, I get these twitches. Like dead people get. Or, as I prefer to call them, perfect computer users. In the mornings I get them too, like when the phone rings, and when I get email, and when people talk to me, and when people are hogging the espresso machine to make fluffy milk. But apart from that, I'm cured. A new man. I smile at the thought and look, in reminiscence, at some reminders of my past. A couple of backup 8mm tapes with cartoons on them, the thank you cards for my attendance at 23 separate funerals of computer centre staff, the mains plug with thin wire ethernet plug at the end. I didn't ever get around to trying that one either, so I don't actually know what it would have done. I'm bored. That's it, alright. I am absolutely stinking, uncontrollably bored. I get up and slip a fingerprint free magnet on top of the reed switch that the boss had installed on my display cabinet while I was on holiday. Then pry the glass door open with a screwdriver. As far as I can figure, the switch is supposed to ring an alarm if the door is opened. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Inexpensive means inefficient. I open the door to the clamour of silence. Well, silence and John Lee Hooker's Mr. Lucky from my CD. I grab my aforementioned ether killer and wander down the hallway to the switchboard, applying another magnet and opening that to silence as well. That's what's missing in society today. Trust. I pull the 15 amp breaker for the meeting room, then wander on round and plug the ether killer into a cheap 24 hour timer set to five minutes from now. On the way back to the switchboard, I hear the first few murmurs about excessive collisions. I plug in my unpatented nail fuse, estimated fault current 200 to 300 amps, with a set of heavily insulated pliers, and wander off to the tea room to start my espresso brew. Halfway through the make, the machine stops. Now that's what I call a collision. I look around in a bewildered manner as panic erupts on all sides, half-made espresso in my hand. I step out into the hallway and behold, pandemonium! Two programmers are fighting over a CO2 fire extinguisher in an effort to put their terminals out. I wander down to my room just as my ex-terminal, the unreliable piece of excretia it is, flames its last and lapses into a dull smolder. My cabinet! I cry in horror and hear the extinguisher struggle end abruptly. In a flash, the two programmers concerned are behind me staring into my room. Shortly thereafter, the boss runs up as well. What's this magnet for? I ask, picking it up and hearing a bell start chiming in the distance. You bastard! One of the programmers utters. I'm sorry? I ask, turning. You did it, didn't you? What? Break into my own cabinet? But I've got a key! That's the terrible burden of proof, really. In this day and age, you need someone to make an accusation. The late breaking news comes in that one of the consultants had a set of headphones plugged into a CD-ROM drive hanging off their network PC. But not anymore. Now there's an unexpected vacancy in the department. I blame the Ethernet isolation specs. Three kilovolts my backside. Quicker than you can say, help us with our inquiries, I'm helping the police with their inquiries. What is this, can you tell me? A burly officer asks right up in my face. He holds up a magnet. It's a magnet. There was one on my cabinet, I cry. Yes, and where did you get them? He asks, seizing control and losing it. On my cabinet, I just said. No, not this one. The others. Where did you get them? Others? What others? You mean there were more on my cabinet? Why? 
I can play this stupid game forever having had years of education at the hands of computer losers. He tries a different track. What would you say this was off? He asks. My cabinet! It was on my cabinet, I told you! I pulled it off, and I think I heard a bell ringing. A couple of hours later, I'm back at my desk with Mr. Lucky, no charges pressed. I close my cabinet, satisfaction mine for the first time in a long while. Then the phone rings. <laughs>